So we've been meeting over the past few months once a week as a way of creatively exploring loss together. And for a lot of us here, this was the first time where we were sort of spending time with people in a group setting creatively. It was a kind of an escape from confinement. I was expecting something very formal that we would be told what to do, but it just, everything just evolved very organically from the way Tess was doing it with us. And she just created this lovely space. I thought it was an arty thing, kind of painting and stuff like that. I, I was uh, very out of my comfort zone when I found out I had to write poems. Using haiku poetry, it's a form that people can connect to in a very simple way. And it's got a lovely structure that is sort of, it's kind of a support in a way, that structure, those three lines. It was like a, a nest. You came in and you just sat down and you listened to people's stories and then you said, sure, my story is something similar, you know? But you don't think that everyone else is grieving. But it gave me time to grieve. And I probably said things here I would never have said in my life, you know? We were expressing those memories in a way that evoked good feelings in us and made us remember people that we might have maybe sidelined in our memories for, for quite a while. I had three deaths in my family and I never grieved, you know? I was a working man trying to make a living. Never talked about grieving. Grieving was for somebody else, I think, anyway, you know? I think we honoured the people by remembering them, by giving them a, a hearing in a group which was accepting of what we had to say. There's no such thing as saying, you should forget about that, no, it's past and gone. Which, you know, the way we often be told about things. I think what's great about using creativity to maybe talk or communicate things like grief and loss is that we don't have to talk about it. We can just share something that we've written or something that we've made or that we've drawn so that we can share it in an indirect way if we want to. She just created this lovely space where every one of us was doing something different that suited our own personalities. And I found as well that it was, um, what's the word for it? It was a place of trust. In my mind, I suppose we were working towards creating this kind of web of support in a way and the, and the creative things we did were just a way for that to develop. Ní mála man ócht bárlum sólas na gréna a tacht an árig. So it means I don't like the cold. I prefer the light of the sun with the coming of spring. My father was a, a, a farmer and he always said he had these massive hands. His hands like shovels, fingers twice the size of mine, the real farmer's hands. It's called, <clears throat> it's called uh, Safe in My Mother's Hands. Um, in my mother's hands, worn, wrinkled, scars of life, safety, security and love. And there are hands. <clears throat> brilliant to feel like this project is part of a bigger network, you know, that these projects happening across the country, it's, it's a kind of a support that I feel and I can tap into, but also it's really great to talk to the group and say that what we are doing here, something like this is happening all over the country in different ways. I think even though it's six people, it's eventually more than that, I think, you know, it ripples out into the community hopefully as well.